meets up with the messenger of death. Be with us for another Tuesday night of tough movie entertainment at 8 o'clock on TTV4. It's Inventory Tech. Ken Season Alive, Wednesday. Closed captioning for 6 News is provided by PSI Energy, making sure that tomorrow isn't just another day, but a better day. You are watching Indiana's most watched news on TGB4, the heart of Indiana. This is 6 News at 10 with Clyde Lee, Dion Willis, weather with meteorologist Bob McLean, and Ed Sorensen on sports. Now, live on TGB4, 6 News at 10. Well, what you're looking at there is a live picture from downtown Indianapolis. Snow is falling. It will continue to fall through the night. And when it's all over, 8 to 10 inches of snow is expected to be on the ground when you get up in central Indiana in the morning. And our best piece of advice tonight is uh, stay indoors. It doesn't look too bad out there right now, though. But winter is definitely here. Good evening. This storm has the potential, though, although it looks pretty calm right now, to be the worst since the blizzard of 1978. It has already been snowing in the Indianapolis area for about five hours now. For the latest, let's go to the man who's had his eye on the storm all evening long, meteorologist Bob McClain. Bob? Thanks, Dion. As we've mentioned, there is the winter storm warning continuing in effect for a large part of Indiana. The only area that escapes uh, the potential full brunt of this storm is up in the northwestern roughly quarter of the Hoosier State, where a snow advisory is in effect for tonight and early tomorrow morning. But the rest of the state will be under that winter storm warning tonight into early tomorrow morning. Now, this is the way things look as of right now. We may see about as much as 8 to 10 inches, but the satellite pictures are beginning to show a wedge of dry air coming in from the southwest. If this pattern continues, this could actually reduce the amount of snow as the dry air wedges its way in between the two main areas of snow. So we're going to have to kind of watch this recent development to see how this may have an influence on our local weather pattern. We'll have more information just a bit later on in the newscast. Now, back to the anchor desk. Okay, thanks a lot, Bob. And we'll check back with you later in the newscast as you're watching and waiting. Right now, though, let's see what's going on outside on the roads. Stacia Matthews is live downtown with the latest for us this evening. Stacia? Well, Clyde, it is coming down. It is sticking, and central Indiana is under a blanket of snow tonight. As mentioned earlier, this is the most significant snowstorm to hit this city in recent years. And uh, it's got so much snow is coming down so hard and so fast that it's got the city crews working at full force. They expect to be out on the streets between uh, 36 and 48 hours. They've been bringing out all the uh, heavy artillery to stay ahead of the game. By the time most of us head for work in the morning, extra salt was brought in to make sure that there is enough to get the job done. There are at least 75 people on the job at this hour, but almost twice that many will be out on the roads by 3 a.m. Now, if you must travel tonight, plan on lots of extra travel time and allow plenty of distance between you and the car in front of you. There are reports tonight of numerous accidents on the streets, lots of slick spots out here. The same is expected during the morning rush hour, but also in addition to the snow coming down, expect snow drifts. They'll complicate an already dangerous situation. And the folks with the uh, transportation department told me if you, if you uh, park your car on the street, it's not a good idea because once they start plowing the roads, your car could get buried under all that snow. So if you can, park your car someplace else, particularly on the snow routes. Clyde, Dion? It's pretty slippery, too, on the interstates, the overpasses, and bridges as well. Right. Okay. Thanks a lot, Stacia. Well, a storm that carries as much wet snow possibly as the one that could hit us at this hour contains some hazards. There is more to keep in mind, of course, than just slowing down on the roadways. Channel 6's Jim Parsons has more on the possible dangers of this storm, the ones you may not be thinking of right now. And he joins us live from the dispatch room of the AAA Hoosier Motor Club. Jim? Well, Dion, the phones uh, here at the uh, AAA Hoosier Motor Club uh, are a little bit, uh, ringing a little bit more often than usual tonight. They've just started to get some phone calls from vehicles in ditches off the road, especially out in rural areas, and that is expected to pick up as the night continues. Uh, these dispatchers have just uh, learned from police that a, a jackknife livestock truck 
has closed the ramp from 465 South leading to 70 West out by the airport. So you cannot get from 465 South to 70 West by using that ramp. You have to get off in order to get back on. And that's just the first of what's expected to be many problems tonight. Down in the Evansville area, uh, pl uh, plows and tow trucks aren't even on the road because of a visibility problem and high winds and heavy snow. That could be part of the problem here tonight. It's been about 10 years since the last uh, major snowstorm, uh, about 9.5 inches back in 1984. And so uh, we forget what we should remember in terms of not just uh, driving conditions, but also health uh, situations, what we should remember in terms of that. And there are some tips provided by Dr. Gary Mailman from Methodist Hospital Emergency Center tonight, and they are these. Uh, tomorrow morning, shovel with care. This is heavy, wet snow, and it tends to take its toll on people with weak hearts or people who are out of shape. Also, dress in layers for the cold weather. Prepare a survival kit for your vehicle. Have it in your, in your trunk with a blanket and a shovel and some extra food and clothing. And also for elderly people, they should stay indoors until their sidewalks are uh, shoveled because they could fall and easily break a bone. Uh, the, the phones, as you can hear, are, are ringing here, and it probably will get a lot worse as the night goes on. Clyde and Dion? All right, Jim, some good advice there for everybody. Right. Check okay. back with you later. To the other big story of the day, Mike Tyson remains in prison tonight, but no fewer than nine lawyers carried his case before the Indiana Court of Appeals. Today, the former heavyweight champ's attorneys asked the court to release Tyson from prison and to give him a new trial. Defense counsel Alan Dershowitz said the judge should not have allowed the state to play the victim's 911 phone call to police made one whole day after the rape. He also claimed the state handpicked Judge Patricia Gifford to hear this case. And the Harvard professor said the court erred by not allowing three witnesses to testify who could have helped Tyson's claims that he and the victim had hugged and kissed before going to his hotel room. But Deputy Attorney General Larry Rubin says that Tyson had the best lawyers from one of the most powerful law firms in the world. Rubin argued Tyson's lawyers hid the witnesses for three days before telling the state. And on the issue of Desiree Washington's financial motives, the state says the family hired an attorney to help fend off the media, not to make money from books and movie rights. After the hearing, defense attorney Dershowitz said he was pleased with the way it went. And he said that, no doubt, to Mike Tyson, too, when the attorney visited his client at the Indiana Youth Center in Plainfield. There was no statement after that visit, but Dershowitz did take time today to talk about the Tyson case with law students at the IU Law School in Indianapolis. I am amazed that you folks who live in Indiana and who study in Indiana have accepted a system for so many years under which, in a criminal case in Marion County, the prosecutor gets to pick the judge. The Indiana Attorney General's office released a short statement after the court proceedings that said the state is pleased with the oral arguments, and along with everyone else, it now awaits the decision of the Court of Appeals. The court's decision could come any time in the next four to eight weeks. It's been a busy night and still much more ahead on 6 News at, uh, tonight for you at 10. President Clinton addresses the nation for the first time since he took office. He asks all of us to prepare to make some sacrifices. This is Gary Dick. Indiana has been losing jobs to Mexico for years. Coming up, reaction from south of the border in a Delco Electronics plant in Matamoros, Mexico. This portion of the news is sponsored in part by Ameritech and Indiana Bell, your link to a better life. Made it on the line tonight outlining his program of change. And he says it will cost too much not to change, that at the rate we're going now, our standard of living won't double for another 100 years, that the deficit has quadrupled in only 12 years. He says this is a call to arms, both patriotic and painful, with its tax increases and spending cuts. But I can assure you of this. You're not going alone anymore. You're not going first. And you're no longer going to pay more and get less. 70% of the new taxes I'll propose, 70% will be paid by those who make more than $100,000 a year. The, specific, the president says he's proposing 150 specific government spending cuts and a cut of 100,000 federal jobs by attrition. Some Republicans are saying tonight that's not enough. The Indiana economy has seen thousands of jobs vanish as companies look for lower-wage workers. Kokomo's Delco Electronics is one of hundreds of U.S. companies to locate south of the border in Mexico. Now, more than 25 years ago, the Mexican government established a strip along the U.S. border called the Maquiladora region, where American companies could open plants and employ Mexican workers. 
Today, the so-called vaquilas employ a half million workers, many at the expense of industrial states like Indiana. Tonight, Gary Dick visits a Delco electronics plant in Metamoros, Mexico, to see if American plants in Mexico really do mean adios to Indiana jobs. <laughs> Uh, too few jobs, uh, too few wages, the, so, the opportunities simply are not there. Like many towns along the U.S.-Mexican border, Matamoros is a picture of contrast. It's a city rich in the proud Mexican culture where family is first. And for many people here, U.S. companies represent a unique opportunity for families to succeed. But while Matamoros is rich in heritage, like much of Mexico, it is also very poor. 25 years after the first U.S. company opened here, some say things are only getting worse. They did not come for Mexico's benefit. They essentially came to make a quick killing and they're doing it at Mexico's expense. Maquilas have dramatically changed places like Metamoros. Today, there are more than 75 U.S. companies with operations here, employing more than 35,000 workers. The biggest plant here, Delco Electronics. Welcome to Deltronico's de Metamoros. If you expected a sweatshop, guess again. Nearly 4,000 employees here work in a plant that is the rival of any in the United States. It's clean, well-lighted, and state-of-the-art, producing not just radios for General Motors, but high-tech electronic devices for GM and other customers around the world. The plant has taken over much of the radio production that was once at Delco Electronics in Kokomo. It's cost North Central Indiana thousands of jobs, but company officials argue many more would be gone without operations in Mexico. If we would not have opened this operation back in 1980, uh, we ran the risk of losing a, a big portion of our business, and that would have hurt Kokomo, Indiana. In Matamoros, Delcotronics is regarded among the nicest and best-paying plants along the border. Delco and other U.S. companies are here primarily because of low wages. In Kokomo, an average union production worker makes about $17 an hour. Here, they pay some of the best wages in Mexico, about $2.50 an hour. And workers seem grateful for the opportunity. My family likes it very much that I work here. I really don't know what the salaries are in the United States, but I'm very comfortable with the wages I'm paid here. The majority of us feel it is a positive thing because they offer us employment. It's a very necessary part of our lives, so we can live better. A better life on 60 or $70 a week is inconceivable in America. But in Mexico, wages paid by U.S. companies allow many families the chance for something they may never have been able to afford, hope for the future. In Matamoros, Mexico, Gary Dick, 6 News. Delco Electronics is opening two more plants in nearby Reynosa, Mexico, where 3,000 workers are to be on the job by the end of this year. Here at home, UAW Local 292 in Kokomo says it all means the continued loss of Hoosier jobs. But workers in Kokomo have been luckier than most. General Motors has brought in high-tech electronics jobs to replace some of the lower-skilled radio jobs that move south to the border. Tomorrow night, we go into the home of a Mexican factory worker to find out how they live and to hear their impressions of corporate America in Mexico. Honey, I'm home. Get me fries, coleslaw, and a big boy for 3.30. Fries, coleslaw, and a big boy. I want the original double-decker for 3.30. <laughs> fries, coleslaw, and a double-decker. I want the big boy. The big boy. OK, fries, coleslaw, and the big boy. Honey? Now, get the original Big Boy fries and coleslaw for just $3.30. Wow. And don't forget the other classic. Order a large Coke with your Big Boy today. Honey.
but because of all that snow. At times like this, the weather is especially important to all of us. That's why tomorrow morning, 6 News will start at a special time, 5.30 a.m. 6 News is working all through the night. We'll have the latest school closings and other cancellations. And our exclusive Metro traffic reports can help you plan your trip to work tomorrow morning. So join us for a special edition of 6 News this morning, tomorrow, starting at 5.30 a.m. The weather is sponsored in part by Extrazine 2. It feeds a nation. A pl Plain uh, with the uh, information everybody wants mm -hmm. to know. Well, it looks like we kind of hinted about that at the beginning of the program, and now there's more evidence that maybe this thing is not going to turn out as badly as we really? were talking about well, during the course news. of the afternoon. There have been some changes that are taking place in the lower and middle reaches of the atmosphere, which, of course, are the main areas that these storms feed upon and as these changes continue to hopefully clarify themselves the the picture may become a little clearer now outside right now at least we can be nice and sure that it is snowing at a moderate rate it's 29 degrees the humidity is 96 percent wind out of the northeast now at 14 miles per hour and the barometer is falling our high today was 31 and the low today has been 25. Uh, officially, we've had about an inch of snow here in Indianapolis. Uh, Bob Long of Claremont has recorded almost two inches of snow there on the west side. Well, so far this winter, as we all know, it's been pretty quiet. Uh, the largest 24-hour snowfall, just under four inches, as you can see, and the seasonal total was only a little over nine inches. And uh, boy, oh boy, can you remember last Wednesday when we were 65 degrees <laughs> come a long way from that we've still got the winter storm warning in effect now for a large portion of indiana with a snow advisory up over the northwestern portion of the hoosier state here are the changes i've kind of scaled back the amounts of snow into that three to six inch category over the southern two-thirds of indiana with even smaller amounts two to four north of that line from covington to tipton to Portland. As we mentioned, it looks like the atmospheric factors are changing and we can see them very nicely here. Watch right in here. See how the area of precipitation kind of thins out and notice down here, these are thunderstorms down there and they're acting like a sponge absorbing that moisture that is flowing north off of the Gulf of Mexico and reducing the amount of moisture that is available for this storm to work with farther north, like from the Ohio River northward. So what that all means is that the potential for the larger amount of snow, I think, has diminished for our area, at least somewhat. Then the low will move off to the northeast. Another shot of energy will catch up with it, intensify it there, and again, bring the heavy snow into the New England region. So for tonight, here in our viewing area, snow, heavy at times, that'll mainly be over central and southern Indiana, temperatures mid-20s to about 30. For tomorrow, the snow will taper off gradually, cold, highs uh, mid-20s to about 30. And then for Wednesday, cloudiness will mix in a little sunshine, but very chilly with highs in the low to mid-20s. It looks like varying amounts of cloudiness and sunshine for Thursday and Friday, and then for Saturday, the possibility of another weather disturbance moving in. The three to six inches we're looking mm -hmm. at now, so it's mm -hmm. toning it down. So we got to keep listening to you. Well, we'll keep monitoring the conditions as they change. Because okay. I know it's tracking. Yeah. Thanks, so. Bob. We're going to hear from Bobby Knight as his Hoosiers are now at the top of the heap in college basketball. That and more straight ahead. Stay with us. This portion back, everybody. The Pacers were 110-105 losers to the Cavaliers tonight in Cleveland that stretches their losing streak to a season high seven games in fact this is the longest losing streak the Pacers have fallen victim to since Bo Hill took over as head coach back in 1990 Reggie Miller and Pooh Richardson each led the 22 and 28 Pacers with 24 points apiece Mark Price's 25 were tops for the Cavaliers Pacers are in a world of hurt folks the ice were a bit luckier than the uh, Pacers tonight at the Coliseum they were 6-2 winners over Kalamazoo they are now 22 and 28, same record as the Pacers. Ooh, these winter sports teams in our city are really doing well. Anyway, they're now one point ahead of the K-Wings in the IHL Central Division playoff race. 
One team that everybody around here can be proud of. Yes, even you Purdue fans. Of course, IU fans can be proud of Purdue, too, because uh, the Boilers are very good. IU ranked number one again this week in both polls. They are almost unanimous selections in both the coaches' poll and the media poll after their 93-92 come-from-behind win Sunday over Michigan. They've won 11 straight. They're 11-0 in the Big Ten, 22-2 overall. They've got the nation's longest home court winning streak, 27 in a row, and everyone's contributing. Our guys coming off the bench, they all uh, really contributed. I told them it was a real nine-man uh, win. I, Michigan uh, is really, uh, really tough. Rankings are number politics, you know. Uh, if we if we got beaten tonight, somebody else would have been number one. But uh, we don't, you know, I, I'm sure Chris agree with me. It ain't number politics. So we just go out and just play our, our, the best that we can play and not worry about any of that. Well, the Daytona 500 was full of excitement to the very end on Sunday. Dale Jarrett edged Dale Earnhardt to win 238 grand in his Chevy Lumina. Jeff Bodine took third. Hut Strickland was fourth. He'd make a great quarterback, wouldn't he? And Pittsburgh, Indiana native Jeff Gordon at the tender age of 21 finished fifth, earning 111,000 bucks. Indy 500 champion Al Unser Jr. finished a disappointing 36th in the 41 car field. You got to check this out. This was yesterday at the National Hot Rod Association Winter Nationals at Pomona, California. Finals in the top fuel division. Joe Amato, nearest you, Kenny Bernstein, whose engine is on fire. Watch him crash through the guardrail. Now, you're not going to believe what happens here. That impact knocks Kenny Cole. Watch what happens to the engine on the back of his top fuel dragster. It comes exploding off the back of the rail. Again, Bernstein is out cold in the uh, top fueler at that point. They came and uh, hosed down the, uh, the rail so it wouldn't catch fire. And he woke up uh, no worse for the wear. Those guys are amazing warriors. Durable. Wouldn't they get You gotta have that speed. I mean, you see stuff <laughs> like that every time. You gotta have it. Back after this. The ninth. Stay tuned for the Golden Girls next on TTV4.